Hi, Katie here with your Galco TV industry update. This week, we're talking about Hyperloop's test run, Siemens and AES Corporation's new battery partnership, and the Tesla Model 3 beginning production. Hyperloop One has recently successfully completed its first full-scale test of its maglev technology in a vacuum environment. The vehicle pulled two Gs while reaching 70 miles per hour down the company's test track located in Nevada. Now, while that may sound fast, Hyperloop has higher aspirations. The next phase of testing aims to reach 250 miles per hour and may someday theoretically be able to achieve up to 750 miles per hour. The system used in the test is comprised of a 28-foot aerodynamic pod composed of structural aluminum and carbon fiber using magnetic propulsion and a nearly airless tube. Now, in theory, Hyperloop will someday be used to transport both cargo and human passengers. Although this initial test track was only about 500 meters long, later tests will scale up in both length and speed, with a published business case detailing a hypothetical 300-mile route between Helsinki and Stockholm being a possibility. Further feasibility studies underway include the UAE, Finland, Sweden, the Netherlands, Switzerland, Moscow, the UK, and a handful of regions in the US. Although possible full-scale Hyperloop implementations are still many years away, this test bodes well for the future of the project. Siemens and AES Corporation are teaming up to form Fluence, a new company aiming to build utility-grade batteries. These large lithium-ion storage systems will be marketed to utilities and energy providers worldwide. Siemens and AES will each have a 50% stake in Fluence pending regulatory approval, which they expect to be granted later this year. The two companies plan to combine their own energy storage software platforms and add new functionality as part of their collaborative effort. The growing shift towards renewable energy and the falling prices of high-capacity lithium-ion battery packs has increased interest in more utility-grade energy storage. These solutions allow energy to be easily harvested and stored until it is needed later. California has recently seen the benefit of energy storage following a natural gas facility in LSO Canyon springing a leak that forced it to be shut down. Now, to deal with the natural gas shortage that followed and to mitigate potential future shortages, California regulators mandated that power companies begin building a specified amount of battery storage within their grids. AES CEO said that one of the advantages of adding the storage to the grid is that it can provide frequency control, which is an important issue in grid management. For example, if supplied energy from solar or wind begins to slack, the batteries can augment the supply of power nearly instantaneously to make up for the lost power. And Tesla has recently began production on its Model 3 electric vehicle, a more mass market friendly version of its 2012 Model S sedan. The Model 3 costs considerably less than the car maker's earlier offering, starting at just $35,000 before incentives, which is significantly cheaper than the company's earlier models. The Model 3 packs in 215 miles of range per charge, can go from 0 to 60 miles per hour in under 6 seconds, can comfortably fit 5 adults, is designed to achieve a 5-star safety rating, and features Tesla's autopilot and supercharging technology. Notably, the cockpit lacks any sort of instrument clusters like a traditional car. Instead, it delegates everything to a single 15-inch touchscreen in the center of the dashboard. 
Production is scheduled to grow exponentially. The first 30 customers will receive their cars at the end of this month. 100 cars will be produced in August, more than 1,500 will be produced in September, and more than 20,000 per month is planned by December. A good start for the 350,000 pre-orders they received in the first week that they were available. The Model 3 is a big deal for the electric car industry. If it does well, it should go a long way towards advancing the industry and making it easier for the average consumer to afford. That's it for this week's industry update. Tune in next week for more of the latest news in electronics, automation, and robotics.